you guys, Sean T. Phillips here on that brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean video today. Then you're gonna go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know today though, uh, major release wise, there's not a lot of big releases today. I think Tyler Perry's Acrimony is one of the only uh, big ones that are coming out today. I think there's also Black Lightning Season 1 and a couple other things as well. Uh, also though, at the end of this video, we're gonna have a whole bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really cool stuff like Dread Central Presents, uh, you know, Adam Rifkin's new film, uh, director's cut. Can we talk about that at the end of this video? As well as a number of other things as well. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And I did want to mention, though, there is one other thing releasing this week on DVD and Blu-ray, and it's Escape Plan 2, but it's actually releasing on a Friday. It's releasing this Friday. That's the first time I can think of in a long time where well, there's been a Friday release of something. Like, I remember years back, they used to do that every so often with certain DVDs and Blu-rays. Like, I remember, like, Shrek, I think, had, like, a Friday release and a couple other random things. So it's kind of funny that that one, like, I just wanted to mention, though, in case you guys didn't know, that one is released. Uh, this you know Friday and I'm also gonna have a review of that one next Tuesday letting you guys know about it but in here though I don't see acrimony but pretty much the only like I said that was one of the only major big releases this one also came out today they only have the DVD this one this movie that stars uh, Zoe Kravitz called Gemini um, I don't know much about this one at all always been a fan of uh, Zoe Kravitz if you guys have seen this one though, let me know if this one is worth picking up. I definitely would get the Blu-ray of this though. But like other than that though, that's all that I'm seeing uh, in here today. Uh, I don't know if they just didn't put out the Acrimony yet. But this one did release today, like I mentioned, uh, Black Lightning. And they have, you know, the Blu-ray here for $30. And it's $25 for the uh, DVD of that one. This was actually pretty good. I watched this one. I talked about this one, I believe, last week. But this was actually a pretty good, uh, one of the better ones of the the uh, uh, CW series that I've watched. And I believe these Harry Potter things here are new that are like double features here. And I, I'm pretty sure this just came out, this exclusive thing here, which is an only at Target. It's a DVD edition though, but includes these Hogwarts iron-on patches here. And that one's uh, $70 for this one. But other than that, like I said, nothing else that I'm noticing in here today. Like I said, not a really major big release week. We'll see though if they have any different stuff at Walmart later though. But when it comes to those Friday releases for new uh, DVDs and Blu-rays, let me know in the comments any of the ones that you guys can remember that came out on Fridays. I, 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 I for some reason, like I said, I was thinking about that Shrek. I think Shrek might have been one. But other than that, I, I, none of the other ones are coming to me. But I know for sure, though, that there were some other ones, though. Into the Valley Thrift Store we go. And in here though, it looks like there's a whole bunch more stuff, like the bottom down here is totally full up. So I'm gonna have to really look through here. They definitely have gotten some new stuff. I think it's been about a month or so since I've been here. I try and go here once a month. And you know, usually though I go through all this and then I end up missing something. And then Fluffy Gamer always wrote, writes under the video, caught you slipping. But I'm gonna try and really look through here today and see if I can find anything in here different though. Hopefully I can come across something. This is one, hopefully sometime this one gets a blurry release. I always really like this movie. That's the same with this one. This is another one that you know, has no blurry release either. And I kinda like this movie. Like, this woman stuck in this, um, it was all set like a parking structure in like this office building. I don't know, I always kind of like this movie. It had the main actress from Dumb and Dumber-er, which was, you know, that weird prequel to Dumb and Dumber, which I always thought was kind of a fun movie. But like I said, I'm going to look through here and I'll show you guys what I come across. This is weird. This is like, I think, a bootleg of South Park. Yeah, it looks like a boot. No, it's not. It's, it's a weird set. It seems like a bootleg, but... I don't know. I don't know. I think it is a bootleg like, from the cover and everything, but like I said, gonna go look through all this and see what we can find. Yeah, I looked around there for a long, long time. The only thing, two things that I found that were out of print and one that I didn't have was that Mary Kay and Ashley movie, It Takes Two. And it has like a weird thing on here, like Mary Kay and Ashley, I think for America on, online on here. But this is out of print, this edition. There might be like a burn on demand of this one. It's out. And it's some really odd show here. And it's missing the cover to it. But the discs were in here. These were both only $2 each. And this is some weird show called like Cleopatra. 
25 25 I know nothing about this one. This one's worth like $20 or something, but it seems sort of interesting. I think it's a show from the UK, I believe, but you guys have seen this one, let me know. But the Mary Kay Nashley one, surprisingly, you know, it's him, them with Steven Gutenberg. For some reason I never had that as a kid. I watched this like so many times though, but I'd, I'm pretty sure I don't have a uh, DVD of this. Into Walmart we go. And in here though, they do have Acrimony. That one's 1996 for the Blu-ray of that one. Other than that though, uh, this one released today, Terminal. I'll be talking about this one at the end of this video. The Blu-ray of that one is $14.96. The DVD is $12.96. Also, this one came out today with Guy Pierce and Pierce Brosman called Spinning Man. This is one that I thought was actually pretty good. I talked about this one a couple weeks back, reviewed this one. And this one definitely was a pretty cool uh, movie. Uh, I believe this was today as well, The Escape of Prisoner, or Six, Prisoner 614, as well as uh, In Darkness, which I think I might get this one today. I'm not 100% sure though. And then other than that, I think this one was today too, The Last Post. These are pretty cool new uh, slip covers in here that they have for like Scooby-Doo and a bunch of the TV series. You have Scooby-Doo movies, uh, Scooby-Doo with Batman, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy show, Teen Titans. Yeah, all these ones have a cool look to them. I'm pretty sure these ones just released. Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, uh, Looney Tunes ones. This one's like a Hall of Fame collection. Johnny Quest, the Flintstones first season. These ones all seem to be like all kind of range in prices though from $14.96 to $24.96 from what I can tell. And these ones were out last week but I didn't see them. These new slip covers as well for like Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz, Goodfellows, Seven, uh, The Shining. The Shining one's pretty cool. They're real like simplistic images for them but pretty cool though. Uh, 300 Mad Max. The ones on the bottom though, these ones are only the DVD ones like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like I said, I think these came out last week, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I end up getting that In Darkness one in here. I looked at the trailer for this one last night and looked pretty decent. What's the pain is though, all the sides of all of them were like scuffed up. Like I looked, there's only three copies of them. They all had little scuffs on them. That's the thing with the, the shelving things that they put them in, the way that slides in. It really can scratch up the sides. But like I said, I checked out the trailer for this one. Definitely looked kind of interesting from what I saw though. And this past weekend I saw two different films. The first one I saw was Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and that one review wise had been kind of a lot of really mixed opinions. The movie was okay. It was pretty much though about Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard's character having to go back to the island from you know the, the island from the Jurassic World film and because there's like this giant volcano that's going to erupt there and they have to go there and try and get some of the species out before they get all wiped out by this volcano and get them to the sanctuary and it's kind of like that but it's not it's like kind of different than you'd think it was going to be i don't want to ruin anything with the movie but it's not as much of that and then like halfway through the movie it becomes this totally different film and it's got some really weird things that happen like one weird thing you find out about that's kind of like well that was a little strange plot point to this movie it was one of those movies that was you know, it, it definitely had that feeling of like a sequel. You know how certain movies, when they get to the point where they've made so many of them, they have this sort of sequel feel to it? This one sort of had that vibe because they were doing some odd stuff. You know, the, the second half of the film definitely has a really different feel than the other movies and a very different setting. I thought it was honestly okay. I did I did like it. It wasn't perfect though whatsoever. I thought it was pr well, relatively well done and they were doing a lot of practical effects for the dinosaurs. You know, a lot of the, the things they were actually building them. So that was like the, f the first time they had done that in a long time because some of the other ones have been more full CGI and everything. This one actually was building a lot of these creatures. It was okay. You know, let me know what you guys thought of it if you guys saw that one. The other one that I saw was Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is the documentary on, um, you know, Mr. Rogers, which is one I was really interested in seeing. You know, I used to, as a kid, always, you know, watch, watch Mr. Rogers and then Reading Rainbow. My favorite, though, was always, you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse, you know, which, of course, that was, like, inspired, though, by Mr. Rogers. Same with, uh, you know, Reading Rainbow boat. This was essentially, though, on the life of, you know, Fred Rogers and pretty much just kind of how the show started and how he started and then kind of the changes and all that kind of stuff, talking about it. And it talked to people who were on the show with him, some of the cast members from the show and all that. But, you know, it was a really well done documentary. And, they, you know, everyone's talking about, too, how it's very sad. And, yes, it is like one of those teary kind of documentaries. I did, like, tear up a bit to it. But, you know, if you guys saw either of those ones, you know, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of them or what films you guys got to see uh, this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. 
Yeah, in here today though, they have Ackroy, that one is, you know, uh, $19.99 here. But also one of the things that did release today was uh, Jack Reacher on 4K. I'm going to be talking about that one at the end of this video. As well as all of the Mission Impossible movies I only on 4K. I only see part 4 and 5 here, but all the other ones released though. I don't know if they just didn't put those ones out or that's the only ones that they have, you know, stocked. And then they have Black Lightning as well. Uh, that one is, you know, $22.99 for the DVD and $29.99 for the um, Blu-ray. This is one of the other things that released today, this film, The Endless. And that one is uh, $16.96. Other than that, though, that seems to be all of the major things. I don't see that Gemini movie in here on Blu-ray. But like I said, if you guys have seen that one, let me know how that movie was, though. So anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say guys, enjoy these shopping videos. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also in the comments below, let me know if you guys picked up anything today. But anyway though guys, now stay tuned for some net new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here is from Epic Pictures from their Dread Central Presents line. This is Adam Rifkin's new film here, Director's Cut, starring Penn Jillette. This is basically about Penn Jillette's character, who is this crazy guy who donates this money. Because the movie, you know, you know, this movie was actually funded by donators, but the movie itself that Penn Jillette's character you know is acting in he donates money so he's like an executive producer and also gets to be in the film and be on set and he's on set every single day of this movie and he only really donated money his character because he's obsessed with Missy Pyle who's acting in the film and he's like obsessed with her, wants to be around her, and he's on set filming his own kind of videos, behind the scenes stuff, and he's basically, you know, just there to kind of, you know, stalk her and kind of just be as close to her as he can. And essentially what happens though is, she's kind of giving him no attention and he's like, the movie too is also, it's really hard to explain because, uh, you know, Penn Jillette's character is actually doing commentary over this entire movie because he's like hi I, I'm t this is my director's cut of this film and um, you know I, I had to take over the film from Adam Rifkin because he wasn't doing it right and it's like I said it's like him talking over the movie itself but then he essentially it's him planning on kidnapping Missy Pyle's character and then he wants to insert himself into the film by like putting himself over the one character's face and reshooting footage and and it's like, it's one of the most bonkers, crazy movies probably ever made. And it's, like I said, it's extremely hard to explain. But uh, the character that Penn plays is pretty much, he's basing him off of like Tiny Tim. And um, kind of like Tiny Tim 2 in the horror movie um, called uh, uh, Blood Harvest. But it has a couple other titles, but Blood Harvest is kind of what he's a little bit like. And like his wardrobe is very much like Tiny Tim. But it's essentially though about, you know, you never know if somebody donates money to be in these films and stuff. You never exactly know who could come. And, you know, he comes and basically steals the footage because he finds out that the footage is all on a, a you know FTP server. So he gets access to the footage and then starts, you know, re messing around with it. And the things that he's doing the commentary over is his messed around version of the, of the film. And like when he inserts footage in, he's like, oh, this is a special scene I decided to add in. And it's like this really terrible quality. It's got the time code still. It's Like I said, it's a crazy movie. Uh, really fun. The thing too is it was pretty cool is you actually, I'm actually in this movie in the strip club scene. So you see me like getting stripped for for these girls. And then you see me in the background for like two or three different times throughout the movie. So that was a pretty cool. And also behind the scenes you see me as well sort of sitting there but it's like the heavy me though so it's like the four and you know 20 some pound me at that time in this movie but on here it's got a whole bunch of different features uh brendan mitchell wet movie one actually went to the premiere of this movie so he filmed that the uh event and talking to the actors and everything so his uh you know is his the thing that he filmed is on there as well as they have behind the scenes on here that adam rifkin filmed you know on the set that's where you sort of see me sitting down in the background of the strip club. There's also in here deleted scenes. There's all uh, knocked off the early cut of the film. It's basically the stuff where Penn's character didn't end up messing with the footage and talking over it. Because the actual story of this movie, though, that the movie that Penn went to donate the money to, Penn's character donated the money to, is about like this murder mystery going on where someone is killing people and like mimicking the serial killer murders like of Charles Manson and a number of different uh, murderers, and he's kind of like mimicking it. 
it and the police people are trying to figure out exactly who the killer is and that's like the movie within the movie you know that that you know, Penn was at, you know don't character donated money to be in like I said it's very hard to explain a very out there crazy movie but honestly really really fun and in here though it has, I love how they did the discs because they're made to look like homemade discs, like the Blu-ray looks like. It's like one of those ones you buy and make yourself. It's like, it's like looks like it was written on. I don't know. It's, it's a really cool thing the way they did this for sure. Uh, the next ones here are from Lionsgate. And these ones are the newest uh, Shark, uh, Shark Week releases here. Now this one here is the 30th anniversary here, 30 years of Shark Week. And this one is an exclusive release to uh, Walmart. I think it's exclusive for the next few months. It's going to be exclusive and it also has on here though a voodoo code which has a redemption here for 30 classic episodes of Shark uh, Shark Week here. So that's pretty cool that that has uh, 30 episodes here on this. But this has, you know, the uh, DVD and Blu-ray combo. And basically what it has here is five fan-favorite episodes on this one, as well as uh, five classic vintage episodes in here. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. I said it has the voodoo code, and then it has the Blu-ray of the uh, you know the fan favorite episodes, which are the newer ones, and then the five vintage episodes on DVD, and then it has the uh, fan favorite ones as well on a, a DVD disc. Uh, in here and if you guys don't know what shark week is it's basically documentaries and like uh, specials all about sharks and about like great whites and about certain species and this one has on here too talking about the film jaws and how that kind of was a huge thing for you know because like with me too when i think about sharks like that's one of the movies that really really creeped me out about going into the ocean like i never really after i saw that because i think i saw it when i was probably about six or seven years old back when i was always going to ocean city as a kid and after i saw that movie I never went into the ocean again, but there's a documentary talking about how uh, about the, the result of Jaws, Jaws and everything like that. But it has a whole bunch of different episodes on here, like Diary of a Shark Man, uh, Bull Shark, uh, World's Deadliest Sharks. Like I said, how Jaws changed the world. And there's also this release here as well. It's this one here is Shark Week, and this is a brand new collection here of new episodes. And this is Shark Week, uh, Sharktacular Adventures, and this has 18 uh, Jolson episodes in here. This one is not exclusive to Walmart. The other one, though, that I just showed, that one's exclusive to Walmart for the next couple of months. So if you guys are interested in that one, that one you guys can only get at Walmart. And this one is new episodes, and this has on here uh, one of the new ones. Is with Michael Phelps going and swimming against, like racing against a shark. So that was pretty fun. And it's kind of cool too. Always love seeing Michael Phelps and things. Because I don't, I think I really mentioned it really, but I went to school with him from, um, you know, elementary school all the way through high school. I was like a, a, a grade behind him though, but it was in some classes like tech ed and stuff like that. So always cool to see, you know, Michael Phelps, you know, in things like this and like stuff that he's done throughout all the years with the Olympics and everything. Because I remember, you know, swimming the same club that he was at all kinds of stuff so always cool though but if you guys are a fan of shark week though like i said it's all documentaries on sharks and all kind of like crazy shark encounters and all that kind of stuff like i said they've been going for years now and these ones are available uh next tuesday uh, the next one here is from uh, universal and i really thought this was a fun movie this movie here is called blockers and this has you know outrageous bonus uh content on here and i love the back because it's done like a text it tells you what the features are like uh deleted scenes gag real prom night john cena's prom night survival guide for parents lino rama uh and I, I don't know director's commentary like i said it's all done to look like a text and the movie is essentially though about prom night about these two dads and one of the mothers who find out that their daughters are planning on trying to lose their virginity and they have like a virginity pact to lose their virginity on prom night so they're you know they find out about this right when the, when the girls go and leave to go to the prom and they're both they're all kind of panicking about this uh the one the one's father is kind of like well you know uh, you leave him alone but then they, they got to kind of rope him into coming along and it's essentially about them trying to go and stop their daughters from losing their virginity and it's kind of them trying to track them down and follow them and they get into all kind of wacky and weird encounters at the parties and all sorts of weird stuff happens it's a very fun crazy over-the-top film i really like john cena in this too because it's 
I think it's like the, you know, he's done some kind of comedy roles and stuff like that in the past, but he plays like, he, he doesn't play up to his size. And I even watched, you know, interviews with him talking about how it's not like him playing up to his like physicality is more, it's played up more just as him as like a regular dad doing a comedy role as opposed to like being like the muscle guy and stuff like that. But I thought this honestly was a really, really fun movie. I didn't even realize too, the one daughter is the um the the daughter of the actress who does the voice of Bobby Hill in King of the Hill and um you know she's also in the show so I never watched called Better Times I believe it's for called but it was pretty cool though I had no idea until I looked it up that it was her uh, daughter but really really fun movie for sure the next one here is from Paramount and this is the brand new 4K release here of the Tom Cruise film Jack Reacher and the sequel of this came out like a year or so back and I believe I talked about that one I believe there's a 4K of that I'm pretty sure maybe it was like maybe it's just like a year back it came out not even um, this is basically this was from 2012 this one came out I didn't see this one in theaters when this first came out this is basically though about this shooter who ended up, you see like a sniper shooter that killed these people at this park, and um, they end up bringing in this one guy that they believe is, you know, responsible for this, and it's like, he's like acting like he's saying he's framed, and the, the police are all thinking like, oh no, this this guy is involved, and he's like naming Jack Reacher, and you know, I need to talk to him, and Jack Reacher is kind of like retired, and kind of in hiding, and kind of doing his own thing, but he ends up coming in to try and basically help this guy because he's thinking that maybe it seems as if he's framed and it's essentially though about things start to fall apart and some of the people that you know the the, the police got the you know get, end up getting like something happens to them and he has to try and help them so it becomes like this whole crazy like situation going on with all kinds of stuff happening him trying to save the day from all the situations that are happening it's actually a pretty fun movie i like this more though than the sequel the sequel i thought was okay i thought this one was a much cooler film though it's has on here though a commentary track on here with, with the Tom Cruise and the director here commentary track with the composer and some featurettes on the film as well but 4k wise though really looks great on 4k like I always say with 4k the big thing is the HDR which is the high dynamic range you know which is basically with the brighter colors and you know the higher contrast levels and everything this one though definitely looks good for sure though so if you guys have that I would definitely recommend you know the upgrade for that one and the next one I got here is from Criterion Collection was so glad to have got sent this to talk about because honestly I had never seen this movie and it was one of those movies I had always heard about and finally I watched this film and honestly it was amazing and it's kind of like I, I knew it was going to be really good but I just can't believe I never watched this until now and this is the movie starring Dustin Hoffman and John Voight, uh, Midnight Cowboy and this is essentially though about John Voight's character who comes to this small town he comes to New York because he wants to try and have a better life and he wants to try and sort of do something with himself but he also doesn't really plan on wanting to actually do much to like get the better life he kind of wants to sort of just like uh, sleep with like women with money that's kind of his plan but he doesn't really he's not really having a lot of luck it's kind of really going poor for him and like people are kind of laughing him because he dresses like a cowboy and that's not really working in New York. But he ends up meeting uh, Dustin Hoffman's character. Dustin Hoffman's character is this real, like, guy who's kind of up to no good. He's kind of, like, sleazy the way he's acting. And he kind of, like, uh, meets John Voight at this uh, bar. And he's like, oh, I can help you out. I can help you make some money. And he sends her this place. And it does not go well what happens there. But then they end up kind of running into each other again. And kind of become friends and are sort of helping each other. And Dustin Hoffman's character is really in bad shape. He has, like, a disability with with one of his legs and then he's like you know sick and he's like things are just not great and they're like kind of squatting in this in this abandoned uh building and it's essentially though all about there are sorts of problems in New York and uh, just everything that can go wrong can, can go wrong with these two. But it's an amazing movie. Like, um, And also, like, the music in this is great. And I kept on thinking, like, where did I hear this? the theme to this? And then I was like, I looked it up, too. And I'm like, oh, the band Faith No More did their own version of it. And, like, you know, years back, I used to always listen to Faith No More. So I remember, like, I was like, oh, yeah, that's where I heard that them use because they did their own version of the theme to this. There's also a song, too, they played in this they like they really really good use of the music in this but an amazing movie and also very ahead of its time i remember too we were reading too this originally got an x rating for the time like nowadays this would never have gotten something like that and also like really trippy imagery like that was very different for the time on here though it has a brand new 4k restoration of the film it has a bunch of uh you know documentaries on here it has a documentary from 1990 on here uh two short documentaries from 2004 on the making of the film it has john Voigt 
points, uh, you know, original screen test on this one. Also has a, um, kind of, like I said, a commentary track from 1991 with the director on here. But a really, really great transfer in this one. If you guys have not seen this one, it's one of those ones you definitely have got to check out. The next one here is from Magnolia, and this is from their Shutter line. Um, and this one and is a movie here called Don't Grow Up. I literally just finished watching this one now, and this was like a great movie. I honestly thought this was really cool. This is basically about these kids they're in sort of like a group home kind of place. And it's on this, It's they don't really tell you where it's set, but it's on some sort of an island. And it's like, I think they filmed it in like, I don't know for certain where they filmed this. Maybe France. I don't know for sure. But it's basically, they kind of leave it as like kind of vague. You know, all the kids are English, but you don't know exactly where this is supposed to take place. But essentially, though, they're in this kind of group home. They're kind of in there drinking and all messing around. And, and you don't know, like, you're like, where are the adults in here? And then, like, they end up going out because they're like, oh, we're out of liquor. We just go out and try and get some beer because the one girl works at the, at the gas station. So they go there. And as soon as they go out into the town, though, they notice, like, it's seems abandoned they see like they're hearing like noises of people sort of screaming and essentially though something is going on with the adults and they're kind of going crazy and kind of turning into like these kind of sort of like zombies and they're like attacking people like anyone that's like older turns into these sort of zombies sort of like crazy people and it's these kids out there sort of trying to survive and figure out where they're going to go and where they're going to hide out and and you know too that something's going on when you ha start having blood coming out of your ear so it's kind of like are these kids all is this all going to happen to these kids and essentially it's about this girl and this guy and kind of like what's going on with them but Honestly, though, this was actually really pretty cool. And this one, like, I knew nothing about this one, so I was really glad to check this one out. This has on here that I'm making of. It has on a thing on here with the languages, because the directors and most of the, the crew were uh, Spanish and French and, like, you know, didn't knew very, very little English. So it's kind of about how, like, working with them and everything. So it was a pretty cool thing on there, as well as the thing on here talking about the characters and the cast and the characters that they play. But check this one out, guys. And I, I guess this was on Shudder as well. I don't know for sure though or if it's something that they they're distributing like physical things like because i'm pretty sure shutter is a streaming service the next one's here and i'll put a link where you guys can order these ones for the best price are from the warner archive and this one is finally released because this one they're only there was like a fan favorites edition of this from like 2006 that came out which had like six episodes but this is step by step the complete first season here and this is one of those ones that was a tgif show you know, that had, like, uh, Perfect Strangers. It had um, Family Matters and Full House. And there might have been one or two other things, but those are the ones I always remember. Um, and this is, like, this one has never been released on, you know, as season sets in the past. Finally has gotten a release. And I love this show. This And this is also a very rare show because they don't really have, you know, this didn't really get a big syndication where I remember seeing this. I, you know, and they don't really run it like they do with things like Full House or Family Matters. You don't really see this on TV. You know, I don't really remember it for years. So it was amazing to see this again. And this is basically about these two, this couple that end up, you know, uh, meeting and then they like got, kind of got married on like you know in, when they were in Jamaica. They, he basically Susan Summers' character was p cutting Patrick Duffy's hair at the salon they have in the house, and that she has in her house. But then they ended up meeting in Jamaica because he would kind of follow her there. They got married and then came back and then their kids because they both have kids, their own set of kids. And it's kind of about them finding out about this and kind of having to get along and you know you know for the together and everything and they're all their kind of problems and disagreements and everything. But what's amazing is the second episode. And I I forgot about this and it was like amazing surprise uh steve urkel comes in it because you know steve urkel, urkel was in family matters and he kind of flies down and it's like there's also this has the dude the urkel going to a dance with the one girl and it has the do the urkel song which is amazing amazing and it was like whoa it was like i, I won't lie i got up and danced to it did the urkel <laughs> It was like it was for real seeing that again because I had not seen this in whenever this aired was this it was on like 1991. That was probably one of the last times I saw that was when this was first on, but amazing. Uh, buy this, you know, so, so they put out the other seasons. And also here from the Warner Archive as well is Perfect Strangers, and this is the complete fourth season. And this is another one. These have just started coming out again because the first two seasons were together in a set and it was years and years and years and finally about a, two months back or a month or so, month and a half back, season three came out. And this is basically about these, you know, this one guy and his cousin, uh, Valky, and he's like, you know, I think he was from like Russia or something and it's basically like, um, you know, they all sort of 
kind of them living together in this apartment and they get you know get a job together and there's all sorts of problems between them that are happening and it's like things like their work are having all sort of problems and trying like their dating life and everything and there's all sort of wacky encounters with the, with the Balky and like all sort of things that happen it's a really really fun show it's another one that I had not seen this show in years both this and this one had you saw this one you know syndicated a little bit more I would say than step by step step by step really has been lost you know I mean I honestly don't remember the last time that that aired but it's amazing these ones are out I'm so glad about these the next ones here are from Gravitas Ventures this one I was really interested in seeing and this stars uh, Tara Reid she's in this movie for like 15 minutes or so and this is a movie called uh, Bus Party to Hell and this is basically though about this bus that's going to like one of those party buses it's going out to um, Burning Man to, for the Burning Man uh, Festival but you know they end up dr getting you know driven out there in this bus and um Tara Reed's character is kind of out there as like this hippie girl and like this one guy kind of comes after is coming after her and the guy's head gets cut, cut off and then his like head is still alive there's like really wacky crazy like goofy effects in this but essentially though uh the bus driver though is in on something and drives them out there and kind of like abandons them out in the middle of nowhere and when they get out there this is it's in this kind of cult community of all these cult members that are out there like attacking the bus and essentially though it's kind of like they were let out there for a certain reason and there's like all these kind of rituals and there's these like I said these crazy insane over the top kind of like deaths and things that are happening to people the way they're getting killed in this it's like like I said super wacky super crazy super ridiculous but if you kind of if you guys like really really over the top uh, crazy gory films check this one out here this one here is from Garage Adventures as well and this is a movie that uh, Corey Feldman is in and he's his character is great in this like he is like crazy playing this like weird sort of um, vampire character like with this like makeup and everything he's really cool like he steals a show in this movie it's a movie here called Corbin Nash it's essentially though it's kind of hard to explain but it's like about these um sort of like a vampire hunter kind of guy and it's like um he's trying to track down these two bad vampires that are kind of like um kind of like com you know, making forms of other vampires sort of i guess that's what you would sort of say it is it's like it's like the guy is a detective trying to like um take down these vampires that he kind of finds out about that's going on and like because there's been some killings and stuff that are happening in the you know the area this is set that's essentially what it is but you know cory Feldman plays like the one of the vampire brothers but like i said he plays at this crazy stuff and he's like doing really weird things in it like i always have been a huge fan of cory feldman so always like anything that he's in but cool to actually see him too in another vampire movie because like he was in when it comes to vampires of course you know think of lost boys and then he was in um the the, uh, Tales from the Crypt movie when, he's, when he turns into a vampire. I feel like this is probably the third like vampire thing that he's done because you know the this first the Lost Boys sequels as well though. But really fun, crazy vampire movie. Um, also in this movie, Malcolm McDowell is in the film. Uh, you know, uh, Rugger Howard is in this movie. Uh, Bruce Davison. So a lot of people are in this one as well. And the next one is from Gravitas Ventures as well. It's a movie here called Body Snatch. This is basically about these two friends that are going on a ride along with their one, the one's cousin who's a cop. And he, like, the stuff with the cop is amazing because he's like really crazy over the top uh, guy and like the stuff that he's saying to these guys and like because he's he's letting them drive the the cop car. He's messing around. They're drinking in there. It's like all kinds of really goofy stuff. But they go and end up um, picking up the one girl that the guy likes. They're like, you should pick her up and bring her along but then they you know end up having this traffic thing happen you see, see somebody messing around and they go to pull them over and the guys like says the cop says I'm gonna go and pull this person over and get their license and then they're saying no no don't do this don't do this leave them alone uh, that's what the dispatcher is saying let them go and he's like no I'm gonna do it I'm gonna try and pick her up and try and get her number <laughs> and then like um, of course too in the beginning of this movie too you see like some kind of you know something like you know supernatural alien kind of thing is going to happen but essentially though they end up doing this and then the guy the woman attacks the cop and then after this happens the dispatcher's like uh, come back come you know drive the car and meet us at this location they get to this location they find out it was like a setup as essentially though this something happens where people's bodies get taken over by this sort of alien type force and these guys with this girl are trying to get away and everywhere they go they're kind of someone's kind of coming after them and you know get going after them 
They don't know what they're going to do, and it's sort of about them trying to figure out what's going to happen. But this is a fun kind of horror science fiction comedy movie here. This one is from Garrett's Ventures. It's a movie here called The Chaos Brief. This is about a group of friends that are going to... Um, you know, they're going out kind of camping in the woods and they end up discover, you know, witnessing something weird out in the woods. And it's sort of like a supernatural thing. They see a thing out in the sky. They kind of think it could be like an alien type thing. And also it deals sort of like um, with like this footage too. Like in the beginning, you see like a hacker kind of character saying, you know, we're watching you and all this kind of weird stuff. But what ends up happening though is when they go out to this woods, when they witness this, when they kind of leave and go back, then like weird things start to happen. They start like, in their backyard things start to like get moved the chairs get moved around and essentially though they saw something out there and something is kind of coming after them because of what they saw and it's like I said it's sort of like an alien done found footage style movie here and this one is a movie here called monochrome and this is like about a uh, police officer who has the ability to see um, he can see sound and hear color it's like this guy he has this like this can sort of like a condition where he can like do these sort of things but it's essentially though about this girl who ends up kind of cracking up uh, her boy Boyfriend ends up getting arrested because he was like stealing all this money and has all these kind of people who are after him for all this money that he was stealing. The cops or you know arrested this guy, the, the guy and the girl kind of ran off and um, she ends up like kind of hiding out into this village. The one guy's like a character actor who's been in like train spotting and a whole bunch of different movies and she ends up like working for him. And she kind of starts to crack up and kills him. And essentially when this happens, it kind of like, you know, opens something in her in herself and like she kind of goes nuts. And she starts to go around on like sort of like this killing spree. And the guy who has this ability to hear sound, you know, to see color and all that, no, to hear... I, I, I said it right the first time, but I mixed it. But essentially, though, that guy is trying to track down her with his abilities and figure out where she is and kind of get the head up on trying to track her down and bring her down. And it, it, again, pretty interesting kind of movie here, though. Um, and the next one here is from uh, RLJ uh, Entertainment. This is a movie starring uh, Margot Robbie, Simon Pegg, and Mike Myers called Terminal. And this is a, essentially, though, all set down this kind of seedy terminal, like, uh, you know, uh, train terminal. And, like, Mike Myers' character is the guy who kind of, like, cleans up, you know, the terminal and everything. And it's essentially, though, about Margot Robbie's character who works upstairs in the above area of the terminal in this kind of diner. And she kind of has a two different personalities to herself. She One is like this person who's going and tracking down bad people and then other one is like she works as this waitress and she's also like there kind of listening into conversations and getting kind of facts about what's going on. It's about these two guys though that and also, like, the people who kind of come into the diner she's in. Like, Simon Pegg's character is kind of telling his story. These two guys are in there who are, like, looking for somebody. They're in there. But she's kind of, like, listening in and, like, hearing all this stuff. And she's kind of trying to track down this certain person as well. Where if she kills them, she can kind of, like, get this high position in, in the, what she's into. Which is, like, this kind of... Like I said, she has this total multiple personality kind of... A, a hidden kind of personality. It's honestly a really out there kind of different movie and it also has um really cool look to this movie as well it's like i said it's all set in like this train terminal and has really good like lighting and everything and like the like the color schemes and everything to this one this has on here though um some featurettes on here building the world the terminal from concept to creation and the cast of the terminal as well on this these ones here uh, are great new releases here from vinegar syndrome and um this one i actually saw this one years ago it's from the same director who did um hobgoblins and it's a movie here called blood theater it also has a bonus movie that he did on here as well called the visitants but blood theater it was released in this like multi-pack years ago that had like four different movies on it and it was called like nightmare theater or had a totally different name this is a movie that stars mary warnoff you know from um night of the comet and um eating raul and a bunch of different films it's basically, though, it's like in this multi... In the beginning of the movie, though, in this theater, this one guy kind of cracks up and locks the theater and then, like, lights the place on fire and, like, kills everybody in it. And it's years later, the theater has finally been bought by this mega movie chain. And they, they you know, this person has bought up all these other theaters and turned them into these theaters that have, like, multiplex theaters. But he wants to have this one theater, have it be like an old-time type theater. So he sends his employees there to kind of remodel it and fix it up and everything to get it open. 
But of course, though, this some like the killer presence has kind of come back and it's like killing them off in there. I love, though, like the cheesiness of this movie because like the Megaplex Theater is like obviously sort of like an office building. And like they, I love the homemade kind of signs that were like when they tell like the theater names, they were kind of like written in like colored pencils and everything. There's like something really, really fun about this movie. The music is like really cheesy synth. It's like dun, 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 dun. like it's like the most basic synth imaginable but it really makes this movie fun it has on here though a brand new uh, 2k scan for the original 35 millimeter negatives on here it has um, some interviews on here with Mary Warnoff and it has on here the commentary track with Rick Sloan who directed this movie as well as the visitants on here but a really fun movie this one I love this this is probably one of my favorite things that um Vinegar Syndrome has released. It's a movie here called The Grave Robbers. I'll just cover this one thing up in case anybody says anything. But it's a movie called The Grave Robbers. And this is essentially, though, um, like one I had never seen before. And it's like this, wom this, this woman who works at a diner. And this weird guy comes in there and says, Oh, you'd like to have a different life. Wouldn't you, would you like to get out of here and marry me? And like she's like, Oh, okay. And she thinks this guy maybe might be normal. And the guy looks totally like... Because this was made in like the 80s. But, like, he looks just like Chris Kattan. Like, like totally like his twin. Like, if they made a sequel to this, Chris Kattan could play this guy. But it's basically, though, he kind of goes in there, and, and she's like, okay. And she goes with him, and she finds out, though, this guy's the undertaker in this funeral home. And he's very really weird. And the second he goes to the house, too, at night, these, like, weird people outside going, can we come in? And it's, like, these weird-looking people. Like, really weird oddballs. And it's, like, it's, it, basically, though, this undertaker is up to no good and he's like sleeping with corpses and like all kinds of odd things are going on in this town and he's like doing weird experimentations with corpses so he can sleep with them and like their eyes are turned white it's like one of the most bonkers weirdest movies it's got this weird sort of calypso type song they play it kind of reminds me of the song from Ernest Goes to Jail like when he's like mopping up and like the end credits if you guys know that song it's like totally has that vibe but this was absolutely amazing there's amazing like makeup and crazy stuff of like this corpse on a bike it is amazing as a 35 millimeter two case transfer from the 35 millimeter negative as well as a commentary track on here with the director as well for this but honestly you guys have got to watch this movie but look both of them have great transfers and a really fun movie the next one here is from the american genre film archive is with through something weird as with well with something weird it's a movie called god monster of indian flats and this is like a crazy movie. This also has a bonus film on here called The Legend of Bigfoot. And this ha and also has um, a bunch of like uh, classic shorts on here as well. That's one thing that Something Weird has always done for a number of their releases. They have like archive kind of like school and like things about like the, the dangers of things and stuff like that. They always have put those on a lot of their releases. And, you know, they, you know, record, remaster them for Blu-ray, so they look great. This is basically about this small, weird town, like this western town, where there's, like, this guy doing weird experimentations, and they end up creating this giant, like, sheep-like, uh, I think it's like a sheep kind of, you know, kind of creature, weird thing that's, like, a terrorizing the town. It takes a while to get to all that stuff, but when it gets to it, it's like the, the suit and everything of this creature is insane and there's like it's attacking like the people and going after the gas station is all kind of crazy explosions it's a really really ridiculous out there movie um but you know it has a really great transfer on this one but just a really fun movie and the last one here is from uh cleopatra entertainment it's a movie here called china salesman just want to let you guys know this one is available this stars uh, mike tyson and steven seagal and like yes there's a, a crazy fight between them in this movie which is like the main thing to see this for it's like a really well done well choreographed fight between both of them but it's essentially though about this guy who's a telecommunication salesman and he's trying to go to Africa to, tr to you know sell the his services to these two different areas in Africa there's also all this competition there but then the one competition guy there doesn't want this to happen and he kind of wants to make sure that there's no communication between these two areas and he wants to kind of cause it to be a problem so the one guy is trying to make this work and trying to help everyone together and make this happen but then it's all sorts of problems trying to make it happen people kind of coming after him and everything but this has on here though an image slideshow and as well as a trailer gallery on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching this subscribing.